In South Texas, the commercial spaceflight company SpaceX is preparing to test a huge stainless steel rocket. This machine could one day carry humans to the moon, Mars, and beyond. But before any of these big dreams can happen, SpaceX needs to prove that Starship can actually reach orbit. In fact, Starship's inaugural launch to orbit is more important than SpaceX thinks. First up, experts are calling this a testament of the tireless efforts of SpaceX engineers, which spans over a decade. They have been working day and night just to see Starship reach orbit. It all started with a 2012 announcement of plans to develop a rocket with substantially greater capabilities than SpaceX's existing Falcon 9. It was underpinned by the ambition to enable human exploration and settlement of Mars. The company would go on to create a succession of designs for such a vehicle under various names like Mars Colonial Transporter, Interplanetary Transport System, and BFR, which I can only assume stands for Big Effin' Rocket. It all led up to a 2019 adoption of a stainless steel body design, which is also when the name changed to the current Starship. SpaceX has since been diligently applying the iterative design methodology, using intensive tests on a series of rocket prototypes. Between late 2020 and spring of 2021, SpaceX can conducted a series of high-altitude test flights, sending prototypes of the Starship spacecraft up to heights of 32,800 feet and then attempting to land them back down on the Earth again. But only one of those prototypes successfully landed intact without exploding. The company also had to wait as the Federal Aviation Administration conducted a review of Starbase to determine the environmental effects of the expanded facility. In June of 2022, the agency said that SpaceX would need to implement implement 75 mitigation measures to lessen its impact on the area. Finally, on April 14th of 2023, the FAA gave SpaceX the green light to launch Starship from Boca Chica. Getting to orbit has proven far more difficult than Musk had imagined. So much more difficult, in fact, that almost two years had passed since the last high-altitude test flight of Starship. Yet, as SpaceX finally draws closer to its second orbital flight test, the last one back in April, attention has once again returned to the world's most ambitious spacecraft. SpaceX had been waiting for this moment for a long time, but after that first orbital flight failure, a lawsuit has been put forth against them. And not only is the leading private rocket company helmed by CEO Elon Musk on the chopping block, the FAA is in hot water as well. In fact, the suit is actually mainly toward the FAA, for organizations centered around the preservation of of the local ecosystem have called upon the FAA's failure to minimize the harmful effects of the April 20th test flight of the monstrous Starship launch system. SpaceX just happens to be in tow due to the fact that if the FAA loses the suit, they'll have to spend an indefinite amount of time reevaluating the environmental assessment, which could push back Starship's journey to the stars even further by at least a year. You can even say that there's a lot riding on this rocket. I'll see my out. Starship reaching orbit is critical to both civil and military U.S. presence and leadership of space. In the short term, NASA selected a variant of the Starship spacecraft as a lander to bring Artemis astronauts to the lunar surface during the Artemis 3 mission as soon as 2025. But the impact of a long-term license suspension or revocation would go beyond that of a lander. Starship's launch came five months after NASA NASA tested it 12 years and over $20 billion on the Artemis program, the SLS, and the Orion Crew capsule. Each SLS launch is estimated to cost an eye-watering $4.1 billion. In contrast, SpaceX envisions each Starship launch costing under $10 million. Consequently, Starship will likely make Artemis obsolete. The Starship test mission is another reminder that beyond low Earth orbit, or LEO, Artemis and SLS are here to stay for now. But Starship's future role in cost reduction beyond LEO makes each delay now even more costly in the future. Beyond NASA, Starship is part of a rapidly expanding private launch sector. Other players include Rocket Lab's Electron Rocket, which launches small satellites, and its in-development Neutron will deliver large payloads. There's also Relativity Space's forthcoming heavy lift, partially reusable 
vehicle Terran R that comes closer to Starship but is still smaller and carries less payload. Even though I said Starship is part of a rapidly expanding private launch sector, that doesn't mean that these rockets are in the same league as Starship. Mega rockets are much more expensive and riskier. These launch systems developed by smaller startups are closer to being able to compete with Falcon 9 and Heavy than they would be able to with Starship. While the essence of competition is always a welcome scent to the arena of space exploration, mission failures oftentimes doom smaller companies. For example, Virgin Orbit, which provided an operational launch system via air-launched rockets to deliver small satellites to orbit went bankrupt this year, months after a failed test. It took many years and billions of dollars for Starship to reach this year's test, and SpaceX must still contend with and iterate after an explosion. Meanwhile, Blue Origin's forthcoming heavy lift New Glenn has already won government launch contracts and should be commercially successful, but it can only carry half of Starship's cargo tonnage to orbit. Currently, there is no private sector equivalent that could rapidly deploy a satellite mega con deploy satellite mega constellations or deliver major logistical infrastructure to orbit like satellite and vehicle refueling stations which could be critical as geopolitical tensions on earth escalate and seep out into space there may be a future peer commercial competitor to starship but taking a look at the current landscape and understanding how much time and money goes into building a rocket of any kind that's unlikely anytime soon. The only competitor worthy of note is the Chinese space program, which has grown rapidly in recent decades. The People's Republic of China launched its first astronaut into space in 2003 and built a space station, Tiangong, which was completed last year. Longer-term plans include building a permanent settlement on the moon called the International Lunar Research Station, or the ILRS, which it aims to build with Russia and other partner countries. While the ILRS aims to rival NASA's multilateral Artemis program, China is also closely watching Starship's development. China is building its very own next-generation super heavy lift rocket, the Long March 9. Starship development is still far ahead, but it is clear which rocket China is emulating. And no, it's not NASA's SLS. What gave you that idea? Back in the day, Long March 9 was expendable, but in November of 2022, the designers switched to a version with a reusable first stage. Fast forward to March of this year, China had announced that it will be fully reusable. In other words, the result of the Starship orbit test has geopolitical implications as well. Without Starship, it is not unreasonable to think that China could have a reusable super heavy lift rocket capable of quickly delivering crew, cargo, and infrastructure to low Earth orbit and beyond, and not the United States. Although the Falcon Falcon 9 was revolutionary, it was only so for the private sector, whereas Starship could be revolutionary for the whole of humanity. Its potential to win the race to Mars is leaps and bounds ahead of any government or other private entity. And it's important to the United States for its cargo capacity, reusability, and rapid turnaround capabilities. The Starship test certainly exceeded the expectations set by SpaceX, but the mid-air explosion that came after has created a cloud of uncertainty over Starship's immediate future. There is a lot at stake over the next few months for SpaceX, for NASA, for South Texas, for Artemis partners, and for China as the next Starship prototype is developed and investigations continue. Policymakers should be closely watching the FAA investigation into the test mission and legal action against the agency. U.S. national security interests will be harmed by an investigation and litigation that stretch over many years. The FAA had already investigated and cleared Starship initially, and it's not in SpaceX's interest to have its launch complex cratered and incinerated with every test. It is critical that the sides are able to reach a resolution that addresses the environmental damage and remediation from the test, that engages the local community, and allows for a resumption of testing later this year. And to top it all off, as for commercial customers, two other billionaires are waiting for Starship to go to orbit alongside Musk himself. One is Jared Isaacman, who funded and flew on a SpaceX Crew Dragon mission called Inspiration 4 last September. He then started the Polaris program, a cadre of commercial astronauts
astronauts and charity fundraisers who are expected to crew the first Starship flights with humans on board. As for lunar ambitions, Japanese entrepreneur Meizawa Yusaku and Dennis Tito, an American entrepreneur who self-funded a trip to the ISS on a Russian spacecraft in 2001, have both paid SpaceX unspecified amounts for around-the-moon trips. The rocket's most reliable customer, however, may be SpaceX itself. By using Starship's expansive cargo bay, the company says it could deliver 400 Starlink internet satellites per launch as opposed to the 60 that could be carried by a Falcon 9 rocket. Well, that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Remember, everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next time.